Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to show you my pressurized water and filtration system. It's gonna be a two part series. The first part is gonna be the design and construction. The second part is gonna be the uh, installation and I'm gonna show you how it operates. So stay tuned and we'll get right to it. First, we have to start with a water uh, source. So we can start with a uh, um, stream or a lake or a pond or so forth. We can even start with collected rainwater. So here, uh, for the uh, purpose of this demonstration, um, we'll use a bucket. So how you get the water in the bucket, that's up to you. So I use a collapsible bucket. Um, it serves several purposes around camp and when I'm not using it to collect rainwater or when I'm not using it for collecting water, um, I usually line it with a uh, trash can liner or something, use it to collect garbage and uh, whatnot. So after we get water in the bucket, we have to get water out of the bucket and uh, by installing a pump. So the pump I use, of course, is uh, 12 volt operation. It uh, uses a uh, half inch uh, standard pipe fittings and a couple of notes that I have here. It's good for uh, pushing water and not so good for pulling water. So a couple of items to uh, keep note of is um, generally uh, you don't want to install your pump no more than uh, four to six feet or so uh, above the surface of the water. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, and always, uh, coming to the next slide here, always install your pump or your filter on the uh, outlet side of the pump, never on the inlet, because your uh, pump will not pull the water through the pump, but it will definitely pull wa push water through the filter, or through the pump rather. So, but, so after we get the water out of the bucket, through the pump, and now we push it through the filter and of course that's where we uh, clean the water and that's where all the magic happens. So for the purpose of this demonstration um, I'm going to get to the filter later at the end. I want to get through all the uh, plumbing hookup uh, now. Um, I ended up changing filters and I'll get to that explanation. Um, there was a uh, issue with the filter that I used, so I ended up switching manufacturers, and uh, I ended up uh, getting a, a new filter, and I'll be retrofitting my Jeep here in a moment, and I'll explain all that at the end of the video, or at the end of uh, this plumbing uh, diagram, and uh, I'll get to that in a minute. So let's uh, go through the way all the plumbing is done and then we'll get to the filter. So continuing on, <clears throat> after the filter, we add the faucet and uh, uh, a T and a couple valves. So, and in essence, uh, that's the whole system. So we have a source, we have a pump, we have a filter to clean the water, and we have a faucet. So. Um, we can stop there if you want. But what if we don't want to use the water immediately? Well, we have to store it in some way. So that's the where that comes from. So and we have to add a storage tank. So in order to uh, divert the water, we have to add a T and a couple of valves. So once we add the storage tank, we have to have a means to get water out of the storage tank and we add another T and another valve. So going to the next slide, so now we can add, or we can now uh, choose whether we take the water out of the storage tank or the bucket. So adding the battery, and in essence, this is the entire system. So, and then now I'll explain a couple of different, whoops, I'll explain a uh, couple of different configurations of the valve systems uh, to kind of explain on how the system works. 
So first, let's figure out how to get water into the tank. Let's clean the water and get the water into the tank. So here I call it the fill mode. So we'll open up valves one and three. And then when we turn the pump on, water will flow from the bucket or your source through the pump, will get cleaned by the filter, and then up through valve number three and into the storage tank. Now this cycle will continue until either the bucket is empty or the storage tank is full. Now how do we know the storage tank is full? Well the water will continue until it squirts out of the vent which is that uh, clear pipe up on top of the storage tank box there that uh, in this diagram. So the next mode I'm going to show you is what I call the uh, recirculation mode. Now in the event that you wanted to recirculate the water from the storage tank back through the filter or through the pump and then back into the storage tank for whatever reason. Should uh, you collect some water and you wanted to filter it a second time for whatever reason, or possibly you wanted to throw a inline water heater in there uh, into this uh, line where you wanted to pull water out of the tank and then back into the tank not being used. And here, I'll change lights here. And in this case, you simply open valve number four, open valve number three, turn the pump on, and all it does is uh, pull the water out of the tank, through the pump, through the filter, back into the tank. Very simple situation. So, and then the next mode is what I call the use mode, which is the uh, mode that most people will be using, and that's simply pulling the water out of the tank through the pump, again through the filter, and then out of your faucet. Now if you see the way this whole system is plumbed, every time you run the pump, the pump will uh, push the water through the filter. So the water will get filtered not only once when it gets pulled into the tank, it'll get filtered twice when it gets pulled out of the tank. And third time or fourth time if you wanted to recirculate it in the tank in any way, so, um, which is an ideal, which is a great way that uh, this system works. So it, uh, the water will get filtered not once, at the very minimum, twice, which is cool. So, and then, of course, so you got the last mode I'll show you is the bonus mode. And if you remember the uh, going back a few slides, our original system here, um, when we had the original uh, source, pump, and then your faucet. Now imagine having this bucket underneath the faucet. And then now further imagine if you had this bucket a little bit larger and have it be a, a shower pan and then have the faucet be in a shower head and we can turn the system into a recirculating shower system and that would look like something like this okay so you would have your shower pan here and uh, filled with water and then you would simply step in the shower and then uh, the pump will pull the water out of the shower pan, filter it, clean it, and then back down through the shower head. So in theory, you can have a nice long uh, shower and with uh, fresh, clean water as, uh, as it recirculates. So if you wanted to fill the shower pan, it's very simple. Um, all you do is uh, turn on valve number four have valve number one closed, turn on valve number four, turn the pump on, and use the storage tank water, add a couple of gallons of water to the shower pan, depending on how big your shower pan is. 
then turn valve number four off, as in this diagram it's red, and then turn valve number one on. So this way when you turn your uh, shower head on, the pump will pull water from the shower pan uh, through the system and um, uh, deliver water through the uh, shower head. So again, remember that the shower pan can be uh, no farther than uh, four or so, four or five feet below the uh, surface, uh, below the uh, pump. So the pump can push water about uh, 10 to 15 feet, but it can't pull water, so keep that in mind. Also, a couple of notes is uh, always use a biodegradable soap when you're using this uh, mode. I always use camp suds. It's a very highly concentrated uh, soap, and uh, a couple of drops goes a long way. Uh, also, to uh, lessen the uh, work that the filter has to do. I usually hose myself off a little bit uh, before I step into the shower um, just to get most of the grime off and uh, uh, and then this way when I do shower uh, most of this uh, heavy dirt is rinsed off before I uh, get into the shower. So in theory uh, two or three people can take a, a nice fresh shower of 10-15 minutes or so um, e easily uh, two or three people can take a shower uh, with uh, three or four gallons of water so and uh, that's it now let me uh, go on and uh, get to the filters okay let me uh, tell you the tale of two filters as I call it um, this is the old filter that I had installed in the uh, Jeep. So it's made by Pura. As you can see how large it is. This is the uh, carbon filter that mounts uh, uh, in the Jeep. And I'll show you how it's constructed. It's a large carbon filter that goes pull this out here for you. Big standard carbon filter cartridge and that gets screwed down underneath and then what's inside is a UV lamp which when run kills all the bacteria that's filtered through the water. Now the problem that I had with this particular filter is that I had to install it, as you can see on how big this thing is, I had to install it sideways. So in installing it sideways, it was subject to a lot of vibration. So when it was vibrating, the filament inside this lamp was vibrating a lot, which caused the uh, bulb to go bad a lot. So this is the third bulb that I had replaced in only a one year period of time. So the uh, filter, uh, the bulb itself, the manufacturer recommends that you leave it on all the time, 24-7. Uh, the reason being is that it, it uh, requires a warm-up time. So when the water is running through it, it needs at least a one to two minute warm up time. So in our application, when you turn a pump on, it needs to be already warmed up. So that's uh, it's a very big inconvenience. So you'd have to turn the light on, wait one or two minutes, then run the pump system, which was a real big pain. So as you can as you can see it's got a transformer all this wiring and so forth so now i want to tell you another story in doing researching the uh, script for this uh, video i reached out to the manufacturer 
and uh, wanted to get some information in regards to what the filter filters and what it does not. Now, these are just uh, facts. So I called up the distributor of the product and I requested some data. And uh, what they said is that they simply do not have that information. So that kind of set me back a little bit. And I said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, we can't provide that. And uh, I said, well, what does this, I have your product, what does the filter filter? Well, we can't give you that. Well, do you have a spec sheet? No, no we don't. Well, how do I know, <laughs> how do I know what this filter filters? Well, you'd have to do the research. Well, I'm doing the research. That's why I'm calling you. I said, well, we can't, we don't have that information. We can't provide that information. So, well, I found that very interesting. So I further asked them, I said, well, do you have these items in stock? Well, no, we don't have them in stock. Well, I see them on your website and uh, I see that they are on sale. Yes, they are on sale, but you don't have them in stock. Uh, no, we don't. Well, when will they become in stock? Well, we don't know. Will they be in stock anytime soon? Well, we don't know. And we don't know if they'll ever be in stock. But yet you have them on sale. Well, yes. So how can you have them on sale if you don't know when and if ever they'll be in stock? Well, we don't know. So. In good conscience, I can no longer recommend this product, so which is why it's no longer in my Jeep. So I pulled the whole system out. I uh, couldn't make a video that's centered around a product that you folks can't buy. So I remember being in Flagstaff uh, at the Overland Expo in Flagstaff a few months ago back in, uh, what was it, uh, October, September, September, September. And there was a, a company called uh, Guzzle H2O. So I reached out to them and they had a very similar product uh, and, and had a carbon filter with a UV purification. So I reached out to them, explained my situation and they were very nice folks. And what they did, let me get this off my table. Reached out to them. And what they did is they have a product. And I had, oh, by the way, I will mention is that I am not sponsored by any manufacturer. I bought this with my own money. Um, they did, however, give me a discount code which in essence uh, covered the shipping cost. So I did explain to them that I am doing a video and I wanted uh, expedited shipping. So they gave me a slight discount and in essence covered the two day shipping to get it over to me so I can get this information out to you. So, so this is a quick, if you will, a unboxing video. Comes with a little mounting plate, some wiring, some little packing plate. And this is the new system. So a couple of things that I will, that I will, that, that uh, came across. Number one, here's the cartridge filter, which is a 0.5 micron carbon filter. And the entire UV uh, system is this small little item here, which a couple of things to point out. One, as you can see, it's two separate systems. It's separated. So, and number two in this, I will point out, look at the size difference. Okay, so it's much smaller, much more compact between the two. And there's all this other stuff that you don't have to deal with. So all of this came out. The Jeep. 
and this is going in. And in my particular application, I don't have all the room for that. Well, even though I had it installed, okay, this will be much more compact. And in my case, I'm gonna separate these two items, okay, by simply undoing these two fasteners. I'm gonna install the carbon filter in one location. And by lengthening this hose, the manufacturer says you can simply do that. All the wiring is uh, attached to the UV uh, apparatus here. So nothing has to be hooked up to the filter itself. So the inlet in my case will be coming in here. The outlet from the filter would go into the UV purification and the outlet would come out here. So as you saw in the diagram earlier, inlet here and outlet here will go to your T and will go to your uh, faucet or back to the tank. So it's a very simple and it'll allow for much more versatile installation. So one thing that's a huge advantage with this system is the UV purification part is a LED bulb instead of a quartz bulb as in the old system. So there's nothing to break, nothing subject to vibration. So um, I won't have to replace bulbs like I did in the last system. So this is a much better and more robust system. So I'm really liking this uh, filter. I can't wait to get it installed. So, um, and uh, that's about it. The other items that come, that come with it. So let's just pull, let's just pull this uh, package apart real quick. And I'll show you a couple of advantages. Oops, sorry about that. It does come with either half inch or three eighths hose barbs. They go on the end or it goes either half or three eighths hose barbs on the ends, or you can just push in three eighths outside diameter hose. So these are the I guess the common uh, uh, industry term are shark bite connectors. So you can just push in shark bite uh, type hose connectors. Very similar to what you see that's done here. So it's a very simple install. It's basically a push in, push out type installation. So I can't wait to get it installed. So make sure you, uh, in my next video, uh, part two of this video, I'm going to get all this stuff installed and I'll show you how it's uh, mounted in a Jeep and we'll get this thing uh, working and I'll show you all of it in uh, operation. So make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification button so you can get notified when I upload that video most likely it'll be next week so make sure you hit that like button we'll see you next time